Well, good morning. Yes, it's earnings season. I'm Pete Nigerian on this Thursday for Market Rebellion. This is The Take. And yesterday when we looked at the markets, wow, the interesting part about the markets yesterday was we started completely flat in all of the major indices early. We had a nice movement from the, the Dow to the upside. And we started to see the NASDAQ start to flutter around. And we've seen more and more of this where it's a dislocation of where the NASDAQ's trading versus versus the, the Dow and sometimes even with the S&P. So we're seeing a little bit of that, but the most interesting part was in the final hour and a half, two hours, depending on which one of the indices you're looking at, the final two hours of the Dow, a nice spike in all the gains of the day really were gained in that final two hours of the day. And then you look over at the NASDAQ and in the final hour and a half or so, also another nice move to the upside and pulling that um, to the upside from where it was trading. You know, it's it's really interesting when we start seeing this, and we, we hadn't seen quite as much of this for a while at least, where there's that moment, and it might be final two hours, it could be the final 45 minutes, it could be the final 30, 30 minutes of the day. Some very, very massive moves that we have been seeing in the marketplace over the last couple of months. We hadn't seen that for a little while, and now it looks like a little bit of a return of that, at least for yesterday. Now, what was really leading the NASDAQ yesterday? AMD, you had one stock that absolutely was on fire yesterday and moving to the upside and really just continued on this powerful move. And that was strong, but it was balanced out a little bit because the airlines, casinos, some of that was really pulling on the NASDAQ as well. So it was a, a little bit of a push and pull that we were seeing in the NASDAQ, no doubt about it. When you look over at the Dow, it was Pfizer. Pfizer, bell to bell, was the leader on the Dow. And that was something that we saw all day long. We talk about this and we we brought up the fact that there's partnerships and the potential. And anytime we bring up vaccine, and there are so many different drug companies out there right now, whether you're talking about major pharmaceuticals, the partnerships, some individual names, the Modernas of the world, anytime you hear the, the vaccine, we start to see those massive moves to the upside and Pfizer even some follow through today. So what did we really see about the day yesterday that really stuck out? Well, industrials, they were having a bit of a dif difficult time. Financials, they were flat. Healthcare, a nice move to the upside yesterday, about 1%. And you also had tech moving up to about 1%. But it was in that semiconductors. I talked about the AMD, but it was also LAM Research, a little bit of NVIDIA, really starting to help move that indice. And, and you start looking at the SMH to check out exactly what was moving to the upside and take a look at that each and every day. I think that's really important. It's like looking at the energy sector and not just looking at the XLE, not just looking at Chevron and Exxon because we all understand how big and massive those companies are, but maybe even taking a look down a little bit further down the chain and look at some of those beta names in the OIH, just if nothing else, as a reference point to see, okay, how are things trading in the energy patch? As a matter of fact, sticking with that yesterday, uh, Really interesting to see where oil has been trading of late. And then you see some of the reaction that you're seeing in the energy space. And oil has been holding up above 40 now. We've actually gotten up and over 42. But that's the interesting thing as well as we've watched, and it's pulled back a little bit, but we watch oil trading, call it right now, around 41 and a half, let's just say. Gold. Gold, we talked about it at 1,700 in that support level. Got up to 1,800. Shoot, you look at oh, gold today up in the 1870s. So we've had... A pretty nice move if you've watched over a period of time now. And we've talked about the paper in GLD and many of the different, uh, the GDX, but a lot of those different individual names as well, uh, moving to the upside and a lot of option paper that had been coming in as well. Also, SLV, and I'm going to get into a little bit of that more later, but we started talking about SLV. It was trading around 17. Then you started looking at 18, then 19. Got up over 22s yesterday, 23s. So that is something to keep an eye on. And we had a little bit of a conversation yesterday when I was on the half-term report talking about copper because we'd seen some unusual option activity in Freeport Mac. Well, obviously, when you're talking about Freeport and you start looking at copper and you start looking at where copper was to where it is now and that move from the low twos up towards three, that is something very interesting and could power to the upside. And we all talk oftentimes about all these industrials and so forth, right? And you, you see a lot of what's going on and what, what the activity is there. So that's been something. Now, today, we'd seen something very interesting because today we've been seeing this, uh, not only earnings season, the jobless claims. It is the first time in months, months and months, that we'd seen that rise. And that, that was something, I don't know if we'd call that concerning, and it probably should have been very predictable because 
We all know if we've been following what's been going on with COVID and the, and, and many of the different states that reopened maybe at an accelerated pace and we started seeing the number of cases and now you've seen some of the shutdowns as well. Well, with those shutdowns, you almost have to read into that 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 might be the case. The w- report today, 1.4 million, which was above last week's 1.3 million, I don't know that that was shocking. It shouldn't have been shocking to any of us as we've been watching and obviously monitoring what's been going on for a long period of time now. So when we talk about earnings, each day we talk about specifically the, 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 the earnings that we think are the most important. So for me, as we came out of yesterday into today, I think you'd have to look at Chipotle just because of that it's so different from Microsoft, which is so different from Tesla. So you've got all kinds of different uh, areas in the economy that we could take a look at there. So Microsoft, strong cloud, very, very strong cloud. Stock has made this unbelievable move to the upside, a meteoric move to the upside. It is off of the highs, but it's hanging in there pretty good. As a matter of fact, last night, the original, the, the initial reaction was some selling. Stock did go down a little bit. It immediately started to come back up. And that's where it is trading today. It's not far off of yesterday. And a matter of fact, yesterday, the stock was higher. So if you go back a couple of days, this is where the stock is. It makes some sense to me. Uh, we talked about the different areas where they've been so dominant, and it makes a lot of sense. And we talk about, is that PE stretched right now in a name like Microsoft? Certainly it could be. But when you see the kind of growth that you're seeing as well, maybe that gives a little bit more of a deserved reason for where it is trading right now. In any case, the idea is Microsoft's trading just a little bit off today, but uh, not anything very significant. Now, Tesla got a Q2 profit. That stock initially was up over 7% in the after hours last night. Today, it's been up. It's been pushing around. It's gotten towards flat. It's been moving around. Typical Tesla, obviously a very, very uh, volatile stock. We all know that, but uh, they disclose the idea that they're going to be uh, going towards Austin, going to Austin for another one of their uh, facilities. So that was something that I think did stand out. And it's something that was a full known. They talked about some of the negotiations and what some of the deals might be from Texas to give Tesla an opportunity to come there. Chipotle, the absolute incredible numbers when you look at their digital growth, it's just extraordinary. Now, margins, earnings, that's always going to be volatile. But with that digital side, that has really been something that's been amazing. And that has been the savior. And they've done an unbelievable job. You got to give hats off. Former Taco Bell comes over, takes over Chipotle. And we're seeing some of the results of that. So early on, we're down about 60, 70 points on the Dow. Started to make a little bit of a move back up to the upside. Some of the strength areas were in healthcare, where you look over at Pfizer, as I say, that was leading the Dow. But UNH, J&J, those kind of names. So that that side of things was very solid. Uh, The drag, again, is some of these industrial names. Now, they've been off and on and off and on. But take a look at Boeing, Dow, Raytheon, those kind of names, all pulling on it. And then some of the energy names as well, because... Uh, they, they seem to just have these daily shifts back and forth. And then you've got Exxon and Chevron. That'll pull on things either to the upside or the downside. But the NASDAQ, negative early and then flipped over to positive. Now, I'm just looking in front of me because things are starting to move pretty good. We're only 45 minutes into the trading session. Dow's down now about 125 points. NASDAQ made a little bit of a flip. Now that's down about 36 points. Not huge, but down about three-tenths of a percent, and then the S&P slipping just a little bit down about seven points. But I think the most interesting thing, and I brought this up already, we talked about silver. The SLV yesterday hit on four different times during the session just yesterday. I'm not talking about in the last week or the last two weeks or month or so. Four times yesterday alone. Now, the interesting part was they initially started buying, the SLV was trading around 2060. They bought it all the way up to the point where it was at a little bit over 21. And they bought just about every different month you'd want. But it wasn't short term. Everything else we've talked about, now, I don't know how many times we've gone over this, but the expiring Friday, maybe even the second Friday, maybe even going out three. But in this particular case, they're actually extending this time. So SLV, some some huge paper. I just think it's worth pointing out because yesterday this was my final trade, and this is why. So we had paper in September, buyers. August, some buyers, October, buyers, again in August, buyers, and moving out and shifting out in time in August too. So definitely looking for more time, but definitely buying upside expectations for SLV. Doesn't mean they're right. I'm just pointing out 
Very, very interesting and very, very active yesterday. Un incredibly active. So about this time, we always like to hit a little bit of unusual option activity that we're seeing for the day. So I got to give you one that I've given before as well. SPCE, Virgin Atlantic. Now this is <laughs> Galactica, excuse me, Virgin Galactica. Really interesting because now the stock's all the way up to 27. Now we've been talking about this stock for quite a while. We've seen unusual option activity, consistently been bullish, consistently been accurate. So, so far so good. Uh, they're buying Friday's expiring. Today is Thursday. Let's remember that. This is something I was trying to point out to Scott yesterday. Everything we were looking at was short, short, short term, expiring Friday, July 24th. Well, here we are at the 23rd. These expire on the 24th. There's two separate buys, not a spread, two separate buys. The 26 and a half calls uh, that expire tomorrow, bought about 2,400 of those. It looks like our average price around a dollar. And then the 27 calls, 5,200 of those. Now, now understand this too. There is a fairly close amount of open interest. And this always concerns me because is this some kind of a covering or is this some kind of one of those kind of things? But it, it's definitely buying. We certainly know that. And it's trading around 80 cents. So we definitely find this uh, to, to stand out because this happened very early in the trading day. As I mentioned, we're barely 45 minutes into the trading session and we're seeing some of this paper in Virgin Galactic. And it's really interesting. This has been one of these names that's just absolutely been moving to the upside and, and it's been impressive. And we've seen the option paper that's been supporting that. Understand the options world. Knowledge is king. I bring this up each and every day. And the reason I do is, if you're educated, if you have an understanding, and if you understand the risk reward of trades that are involved in the derivatives world, you have a much better chance for success. That's why we've got the best guys in the industry and gals. We have some unbelievable folks out there that actually are on the educational side doing an absolutely amazing job. They're patient and they're really, really good at what they do. So I would encourage you to understand what's going on in the derivatives world. I get calls daily now, daily, from friends, family, friends of friends, and all the rest of it who are who are interested now. And I always say, look, don't just jump in. If you jump in without the knowledge, you're not gonna be very happy because eventually you're gonna have a really bad experience because you didn't understand enough about what you need to understand before getting involved in the derivatives world because it can be very complex. Folks, have a great day of trading. Excited about things and we'll see you tomorrow. I am not on any of the shows today. I got a lot of other different things I gotta cover, but I'll see you tomorrow on the noon show. Take care.